and welcome back to part two of The Diamond of Life. I'm talking to Robert F. Newkirk, Jr. And um, he's the author of the book. And you can find out more about him on his site, uh, robertfnewkirk.com. But I get to talk to him now. So Robert, um, so here you have, I'm sure, a very successful career as a flight test engineer. What inspired you to write a book and become an author? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, as I was going through the workplace, and uh, I started observing people that were, uh, they seemed to be working their job. They were making a living, but not living life. I found that they were uh, not happy with where they were, and but they weren't making any movements to change what they didn't like. And that kind of started me on this path and journey of the book um, and writing the book. And it, went, it evolved over time. Uh, after about four years, I found that uh, I, I went to this conference and I, my mentor, his name is Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. And he was just coming out with this book called What Makes the Great Great. And in there, he started saying the thing uh, of that, uh, he made a statement that there's one out of 850 people actually become successful in their own right. And I noticed that correlated to what I was observing and why I was writing the book. And then he asked the question, what happened to the other 849 people? And it came down as to the words that they were using. So they're always saying can't, and woe is me, and it'll never happen for me, and it's impossible. But I've always gone by the scripture for uh, Philippians 4.13, that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. And that takes the possible out the equation. Uh, it takes the can't out of the equation. It takes the woe is me out of the equation. It takes it won't happen for me out of the equation. And when I did that, that started to take a whole evolutionary track. And then some overseas trips that it came, it took it to even another track. And then that's kind of how the book evolved over time. And it's just come out to what it is. And uh, I'm even amazed as to the outcome of it. And if you want to take a look at a little bit more, you can always check it out at www.robertfnewkirk.com and find out a little bit more details. But that's how basically the book evolved into what it is today. So then, are you saying that we're, in, we're inclined to be a little negative or because we think that we're alone in the universe and, and then, because you were talking about your sort of connection to a more spiritual aspect. Um, what, so I guess my question is, what makes us sort of lean toward this negative dialogue that we have with ourselves? Well, we have to understand that uh, there are some societal aspects that cause the sabotage on a lot of people. And if you're not aware of what is actually happening, you may not be in a position that you can do anything about it. Um, if you look at my, uh, the book, it covers three different principles. It talks about recognition and awareness of your situation. The second part is to question. So if you're not even aware of something that's coming to the point, you're not even in a position that you can question, which is part two. So you have to be able to question whether the situation is apl applies to you, if it's good for you, if it's the, what you want, is it what you desire. And then the third part is correction. And that's the point that you take action. A lot of people will talk about, well, take action to turn, change your life to where it needs to go. But if you're not even at a point where you can get to step one or step two, you're in no position to take the corrective action that's necessary. And that's kind of where the book is. And I think that's where people get stuck in, in society a lot, is that they don't have that opportunity to even come aware and they just automatically conform to whatever the situation is. And they're not happy, but they really don't know why. And it kind of gets everybody stuck. And there's no way to really think about it if you're not even in the process of, of uh, being able to formulate and to analyze the situation. Um, that's very interesting. So I remember hearing a story one time about an ancient culture living on an island and they looked out and they saw these waves coming at them and they were like, oh, why are these waves so big? They're not like the rest of the waves. And finally they brought their little shaman out to the beach and they're like, what, what is this? And they're like, well, he saw a ship, but none of them could see the ship because they had no point of reference for a ship. So 
what, what, if you don't know that something exists, then how do you, aside from read the book, um, how do you get yourself in a position where you can go, oh, um, it doesn't have to be this way. My life doesn't have to be this way. There are two principles that are in the book that I need to emphasize right now that will answer your question. The first one is that your, the amount of education that you receive directly correlates with your boundaries. And if you, the more education that's taken away from you, the more your boundaries constrict to the point where you have people that have never left the city that they were born and raised in all their lives. And in the case of uh, what you're talking about, they're on the island, they've never been off the island before to know that ships are being built mm -hmm. until one comes to the island. The other as uh, aspect of that is that you do not need to be educated to receive an education. The only thing you need is the desire and the need to know. So the motivation that comes from people to learn, and sometimes you're not motivated because you haven't been exposed to anything to give you the motivation to learn more. And, you know, if you're at a point, and like in a lot of my programs, and, and uh, we have a lot of those listed at www.robertfnewkirk.com, a lot of those programs that we use are designed to expose people to different aspects, in my case, of aviation and aerospace. And with we and the essence is a lot of kids have never been exposed to that before. And so now when they become exposed, now they get motivated because they see something new. And in some cases, it's something that's deep inside them that they really want to get a hold of and they want to find more about. Then I get the call from the mother that tells me that her son is getting ready to go to an aeronautical university and the reason why he's going, she noted it was so important because after going through our program, he all of a sudden became more focused in his studies. And that tells me everything. And that's what I live for. That's what I desire. That's, uh, that's my passion is to see that we're doing something to change somebody's vision. And uh, that, that, is, says, that says it all for me. So you, so you find them when they're young because you can influence, um, you can open up their minds young and influence their whole future. How, how, do, how do we get you in front of the kids? How do, you, how do you end up in front of groups of people where you're um, motivating them, uh, uh, inspiring them? Well, I found that I, I don't limit myself to any particular group. I will adapt my presentation to whatever group that is in need of hearing advice. So first, go to the website, www.robertfnewkirk.com, and you can request me personally, and I'll get back with you, and we can set up a date of time, tell me what the students, the demographics, uh, what their situation is, the education level, uh, whether in high school, middle school, college, and uh, I will put together a program that's tailored specifically for the group of students that you're looking at. Uh, I have a several messages that I have to give to the students, but I can always find a way to tailor it to there specifically, even if it's right on the spot and I'm looking and asking them questions or finding out that a lot of my athletes or a lot of them are in academics or they're all the above, or it's a mixed group of students or it's one particular demographic of students, uh, it's all male or female, it's mixed. Um, I'm able to do that. So um, all you need to do is just go to the website www.robertfnewkirk.com and put in a request and we'll take care of everything else and we'll get out there and, uh, and uh, take care of whatever needs to, be, needs to be addressed. Well, there's so much more to talk to you about and I want to have time to do that so we're going to come back in a third installment and have a little more conversation with Robert F. Newkirk. So join us on part three.